Yo, what's up everybody? My name is Dr. Sumner and I'm a Navy flight surgeon. Cool little medical wings here. And I wanted to make a quick video talking about what the heck is a Navy flight surgeon? What are my day-to-day -day responsibilities? How do I become one? Kind of just share my experiences for anyone uh, out there interested in pursuing a career in medicine or with the Navy. And as always, if you're into medical content or military content or traveling and vlogs and all that fun stuff, please hit that red subscribe button below and smash that like button. It'll mean the world to me. I truly appreciate it. Otherwise, let's do it. So what is a Navy flight surgeon? Well, spoiler alert, we're not surgeons. <laughs> not, not the kind you're thinking of. We're not in the operating room, cutting people open, taking your gallbladder out, taking out your appendix, uh, doing all that Grey's Anatomy crap, cutting LVADs, none of that. We are primary care doctors for people working in, on, or around aircraft. So then you might be wondering, why do they call you guys surgeons then? Well, in the military, a surgeon refers to a doctor in general. That, that's pretty much all it is. Historically, all doctors on the battlefield perform surgical procedures, right? And so they were termed surgeons. You know, if I, if I were in the Civil War and I was the physician for a battalion and the dude next to me gets shot, um, I'm gonna open him up, take the bullet out, stop the bleeding, right? Perform surgery. And so that term surgeon kind of just held on over the years as the medical community started to branch out in specialties, internal medicine and dermatology and cardiology and all that stuff. We kind of just held on to the term surgeon to refer to a doctor. So in case you don't know what a primary care doctor is, they are the, the docs that you see every year for your annual physical or if you have a chronic illness like diabetes or hypertension or, or if you're experiencing you know, seasonal allergies or if you have the cold, you usually go to your primary care doctor first. And if something is too complex for them or they need specialized tests to figure out the diagnosis or, or the super special treatment options, they will refer you to a specialist, whether it's your hematologist, oncologist, or your cardiologist, GI doctor, etc. And so you might be thinking, well, why do pilots and air crewmen need a flight surgeon? Why can't they just go to a primary care doctor in general, like the rest of us? So in the civilian world, right, normally doctors are trained to learn about abnormal physiology, disease states in a normal environment. Like we're here at sea level in the comfort of my own home normal environment, something goes wrong. These were what the doctors uh, have to investigate, right? With flight surgeons, we are primary care doctors, but we have extra training in aerospace medicine, uh, disease states or abnormal physiology in abnormal environments. When you are in the cockpit of an F-18, 30,000 feet in the air in a pressurized cabin, right? And you're experiencing a force, a G-force, seven times that of gravity. Things could go wonky, and uh, you need to understand how your body changes in these specific environmental situations uh, and the disease processes that might arise from them. And so with that extra training, we are the dedicated primary care docs for these pilots and air crew and maintainers and engineers and just anyone working, again, in, on, and or around aircraft. So what do I do as a flight surgeon? Well, like any other doctor, we're in the clinic two and a half days a week seeing your run-of-the-mill primary care stuff, right? Your, your hypertension, your diabetes, your back pain, your sniffles, your allergies, all that fun stuff. Uh, but what's cool is we also have to deal with any time a pilot experiences some symptoms while flying, right? If a pilot is flying and experiencing four times the force of gravity, four Gs, uh, and they're you know, 30,000 feet in the air, they're doing aerobatics and all of a sudden their vision goes black or they all of a sudden become extremely lightheaded or dizzy, um, we have to investigate that and work them up for that so that's pretty cool the other two and a half days a week where we're not seeing patients in clinic it's called squadron time and that that pretty much means we go to um, our different squadrons and we kind of just show face make sure that everyone is medically ready and fit for duty um, just see if anyone needs anything attend meetings if they need a medical presence there uh, and but this is also the time where we get to fly which is pretty badass we get to fly in whatever place platform our squadron uses so um, with where my command is we have a couple of helicopter squadrons we kind of have a couple of jet squadrons right so we could fly in the back of an f-18 um, doing all the aerobatics and all that stuff which is you know pretty nauseating and, and or we get to hop in one of the the cool uh, helicopters and fly with them as well and yes some pilots will actually let us take controls 
and we get to fly around ourselves. Of course, they're there monitoring and they're probably very vigilant about what we're doing. And in case something happens, they're there to take over right away. But yeah, sometimes they let us take controls, which is pretty badass. And that is something unique only to Navy flight surgery. The Air Force docs don't even get to fly as much as the Navy docs or take controls like we do, uh, which is pretty freaking awesome. Um, and all my civilian friends and their residencies, they don't get to do cool crap like this, right? They're stuck in the hospital all day. And just be aware, not all Navy flight surgeons have this kind of schedule, right? For the most part, the two and a half days in clinic and two and a half days of flying around, having fun, alert, you know, experiencing what the pilots feel, that rings true for many of the Navy flight surgeons, but there are other flight surgeons who are dedicated to the hospital, right? They're attached to the hospital or the clinic, so they're pretty much there every day. It really all depends on what your orders are. So how do you become a Navy flight surgeon? Well, very simply and briefly, I'm not going to get into any specifics right now. Uh, if you have any questions, just leave a comment below and I'll answer them. But graduate high school, go to college for four years, get your undergraduate degree, your bachelor's. Then you go to medical school for four years. During that time, you will have joined the Navy while you're in medical school. And then once you graduate, then you go to uh, the first year of your residency, which is called your intern year. During that internship year, you're gonna take your last part of your board exam, your medical licensing exam, so you could get your unrestricted medical license. You have the ability for you to practice medicine in all 50 states. At the end of your intern year, then you can choose to go off down to Pensacola, Florida to flight school. And that's exactly what it sounds like. You're, you're in school, you're taking all the classes, the navigation, the aero, all of the you know the physics, all that cool stuff with Navy pilots, aspiring Navy pilots, and then you fly with them too. Once you get X amount of flight hours and flight experience while there, then you break away from the rest of the Navy pilots because they'll continue learning all the weapons, tactics, and aerobatics and all that stuff while you go off and you learn aerospace medicine. It's an eight month program. Once you graduate that, you get your wings and you are now a designated Navy flight surgeon and voila, that's where I am today. Specifically, the way I did it was I went to college at Rutgers University in New Jersey, got my undergraduate degree in biological sciences with a minor in psych. Then I attended Rutgers again for graduate school, got my master's in biomedical sciences. Then I went down to North Carolina to Campbell University for medical school. During this time, I applied and got accepted to the HPSP program, which is the Health Profession Scholarship Program with the Armed Forces. Pretty much they pay for your medical school, but in return, you commit them years of service, of active duty service. After I graduated medical school, I went to Walter Reed National Military Medical Center in Bethesda, Maryland, where I did my internal medicine intern year. During that time, I took my last part of the uh, medical licensing exam, my boards, got my medical license, and then instead of continuing to finish my last two years of internal medicine residency, I chose to go down to Florida to flight school. That's where I did my eight month program of flying, learning how to fly, then aerospace medicine, then graduated, got my wings, and now I am here acting like a flight surgeon. And I plan to do this for a couple more years because it is so much fun. It is amazing. I love it. I would do it over and over and over again. Do this for a few years, then head back to Walter Reed and finish out my last two years of internal medicine residency, get board certified. And then from there, I don't know what I'm going to do. I love internal medicine. I love primary care. I might just stick with that and then do another residency in aerospace medicine to be uh, dual certified in both. or. I might specialize in Hemonk, but I haven't really decided my life goals yet. So that is Navy flight surgery in a nutshell. If Again, if you have any questions at all, please leave a comment below and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Otherwise, this is a great, amazing, fantastic career. No other military flight doc gets to experience this. No other doctor gets to experience this. No, how many people can say they hopped in the back of an F-18 and just zoom, you know what I mean? Or hop in uh, hop in one of the MH-60 helos and shoot guns out the back, right? Um, or, or be attached onto a, a, a big old floating city like a carrier and, and watching jets get catapulted off. I mean, it's, it's an amazing experience. I highly recommend it for anyone who is even a little bit interested just to check it out, explore it more. It might be a lifestyle for you. But again, this is the military. It is a huge commitment. You you know, you might get deployed. You have to figure out what is best for you and your family.
finally whether this is the life for you but for me i love it i don't regret a thing and i can't wait to see what the next few years bring please check out my video on flight school i made a little collage video of my time down in pensacola florida during flight training uh, it was probably one of the most fun times of my life and so uh, if you just want a little little taste of you know some pictures and vids that i took while i was down there i just mashed them together otherwise Again, love you guys. Take it easy. Leave a comment below. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. See you soon. Peace out.